Hello folks, welcome back to my build log of the Barnstormer 25L RC plane kit. So I'm going to continue on and I'm going to be building the elevator and the rudder assemblies um, today. Now there's a um, couple things to note. One of them is we have an option. Um, the rudder can be curved or it can be, um, it can be squared. This is actually kind of like more like a um, parallelogram or something. And um, if you do choose the curved version, um, you have to trim it out of um, out of the square stock. Um, if you choose the squared version, you just have to trim off this this edge over here. Um, I like this one better, so I'm going to go with that. So for the elevator um, assembly, it's a pretty simple, but um, most of these parts are already cut for you in the kit. The only thing that we have to cut are going to be these these ribs. Okay, as I mentioned before, um, you don't have to build this on the plans. Um, the kit is pretty well constructed so that you can do it without having to pin anything down. But I'm going to go ahead and do that because I want to pin it down because it's going to help me make the alignment. At least for the elevator um, assembly. I'm not going to worry about the rudder. So let's take a look at the plans real quick. Okay, well, first thing I did was I just taped the plans down onto my acoustic ceiling panel. And then I just laid a piece of parchment paper over the top of them to protect it. And I just used weights to, to hold down the parchment paper. And if we look at the elevator assembly first, you note that it don't, the plans only go this far. It's not a big deal because when we put the pieces down, yeah, they'll extend out to here, but you know we can still line it up without having to worry about that. And then over here is the rudder. And really the rudder is just really simple. It's just two pieces. In fact, I'm not sure why they couldn't just make one piece. And then, um, so the vertical stabilizers are these two pieces. And then here's the, um, the rudder. Here are our pieces for the rudder. So this is the um, this is the rudder that I have to trim, and then here are the two pieces for the um, for the vertical stabilizer. And this is just going to go right on here like that. I don't really I don't I simply just don't need the the plans the plans for that. So use something straight to um, to get it lined up, and then we'll hit it with some CA glue. So let's check it one more time. Like that. And we'll hit it. Soak on there. It's probably going to go right through to the parchment paper. All right. That's set for a second or two. And I think I'm gonna try to, I'll just wipe some of that over. Okay, didn't do too bad. Now let's hit this side. Soak on here. There we go. Okay. And then we'll come back and we'll trim our, we'll trim this, the rudder back. So that was pretty simple. It just has to be shaped. Okay, well here's the outline of the rudder. So here are the four corners. And this is our piece of balsa. It's gonna go just like that. Get that lined up. And check the both sides. I'm going to go ahead and mark it on this side. Right about there. And then on this side, I think I'm right there. Yeah. So those are the marks on the um, for the outside. There's one there and one there. And so I'm just going to go ahead and measure, measure this and just make sure I got about the same on both sides. I don't think it's critical. It's about a half inch over there. Let's see how close I got. Yeah, it's a little less than a half inch there. So I'll just make them the same. I'll make it about, I'll make it a half inch on both sides. So I'll just mark it here. 
and I'll mark it here. So just to be um, safe, what I'm going to do is get this guy in here, my marks, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'll mark this a half inch. with this square. And then I'll just connect the dots. Okay, there's that. Okay, I'll just now I'll just mark my line. And there we go. Okay, now we'll just cut it. I'm gonna use my little cutting mat. I'm gonna hold this down really firm. And I'm just gonna drag my X-Acto a couple times. Or more. Okay, there we go. There's our little piece. We'll put that in our scrap pile. And there's our rudder. So then obviously we'll come back and we will um, sand that down and shape it later. That's going to go right on top of here like that. And then this guy will be just like that. Okay. So that's it for the rudder, except for um, obviously doing the shaping and hinging and that type of thing, but that's it for the construction part of it. So let's move on to the elevator now. So um, let me see, I got the parts taken out of the box. So this is the, um, the actual elevator, but we don't do anything with that because it has to be hinged. But let's just put it here to, so we can see what it's going to look like. Then we have the trailing edge, which is going to go like that. And then we have the leading edge, which is going to go right here. That. And then we have the center, the sort of center brace or whatever you want to call it, goes right here. And then we have these ends that go like this. And one over here, this side, boom, like that. And then we have our um, our rib, our rib stock. So this is the only thing we have to cut. Um, these pieces that we're going to cut them all, obviously, boom, boom, boom. So what I'm going to do first is just going to go ahead and I'm going to frame this and hold it down with the pins, and then I'll. Um, and then I'll come back once it's once it's secure. Then I'll come back and we'll put we'll cut these in and do it that way. Okay, I took a little break from this, but now I'm now I'm back. So now we're gonna go ahead and pin this stuff down. I decided to mark the center line of my of my leading and trailing edge spars just to make sure that everything lines up okay. So, um, you know, kits aren't perfect, and sometimes when they're cut, sometimes they make mistakes. So I'm just gonna help prevent a little bit of that by putting, marking a couple center lines. And this, this, this is the same, well, the center line is shown um, down the fuselage here on the plan. So this way, when I line these up, at least I know I really am in the center. Um, not much guesswork, 
going on with this with this kit but I like to do that kind of stuff anyhow okay I'm gonna start by pinning the center piece here and make sure I'm lined up on my plan that get down look on top of this thing all right I'm gonna put the pin in here and one more here and now because I have my center line marked right here I don't have to worry about going and checking the edge over here I can just put it right on center here and I'll go ahead and put a pin through here And then we'll do the same on the back. Okay, we got that lined up. And now for this side over here. I wear rubber gloves a lot. Sometimes I forget to take them off. Working with CA glues or anything like that, it's good to have gloves on. That here. So there's this side. Now where'd my piece go? Oh, it's already over here. Let's go ahead and put this side in. That's what's so nice about using this um, this acoustic board. The pins just sink right into it, and it's nice and nice and firm. Holds everything very nicely. All right. Now, if I was using, if these are really thin pieces, like maybe something like this kind of stock. Probably wouldn't put putting a pin through here. Um, it may be better just to sort of pin it on the sides. Um, you don't want to split the wood, but for the bigger pieces like this, this is this will work out just fine. Okay. Okay. So there's our our pieces here. I'm going to do one in the middle on both sides of this because when I put these little spars in here. I want them to be really snug, but I don't want them pushing out. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple pins in here too. Okay, so there's the outside frame. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut our, I'm calling them spars, but I'm going to fit those in here nicely. I'm going to push it. What I do is I'm push it. I'm not going to put it all the way down, but I'm going to just try to catch it in the slot on here and then I'm going to try to mark it with the exacto and then I should be able to cut that all right so I'm just going to drag it drag the blade through it a couple times I don't like to press down really hard. I just sort of drag it, kind of drag it with the tip so that you don't crush the wood. All right, this should fit in here. If we did it right. Oh man, I cut that really short. That's no good. Put that off to the side. I don't know how that happened. All right, let me try this again. Let's try it again. Bingo. And okay, it's better. Trim a little bit off. Now 
There we go. Alright, so there's the first one. And nice and tight. So we'll move on and we'll do these next next five. This guy here. Boy, just really nice fit. You know, these kits got really good reviews, um, these okay models. Um, these guys really put together quality kits. too tight I don't want to make it too I don't want to push out on on the trailing and leading edge I want to make sure it sort of slides in there but not doesn't bow it out or do that to it there we go all right one more did here when I sand I like to especially if something small like that if you want to try to keep it square go one direction do the other direction cross just different from different directions so you don't end up with a slant at least you hope you don't see that was too far apart I'm going to hit it again Okay, good. Everything's nice. I check to make sure I'm not everything's nice and flush. Okay, well there we go. We got everything set. Let me get this out of the way. Things look nice and straight. All right, let's hit it with some CA. Start over here. I'll do that. Then I'll flip it over and get the other side. This, this is thin CA, so it's going to soak into the wood. Obviously. Ooh, shoot. Ooh, man, got coming out of there. All right. What we'll that set for a. A minute. Okay, what I noticed when I was looking at this is that I actually have a little bit of a gap in these two pieces over here. Um, it's not very much, but it is a, it's a, just a very thin gap. Um, and the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to use the my CA and I'm going to use this baking soda method. So, and I think I'll demonstrate this separately. But for right now, I'm just going to do this real quick. So we get an old brush. Don't get a new brush. And I'm going to brush it on here. And I'm going to fill that, fill that gap in. And I'll show this on a different one. So I'm going to brush this into the gap like this. And then we're going to hit that with the CA. And that's going to be a filler. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, Man. This thing's giving me trouble. Got way too much on there. Let me let me grab a. That was a mistake. That's all right. Okay. So what this does is it works its way down into the. It's so thin that it works its way down into almost any 
any opening and then you can fill it in. What I'll do is I'll, I'll demonstrate that on separately um, on a different time. But it's really cool. This is a, this is a great way to fill, to fill gaps using CA glue. And it's actually just as strong as if you're, if you're bonding the wood. At least I think so. Okay, let's see if we can pull this apart. All right, let's pull out our pins. Chances are a lot of that CA got through and dribbled down onto the parchment paper. That's okay because it should be able to come off pretty easily. If not, we can just peel it off or trim it off or whatever. But imagine if you did that straight onto paper onto your plan, you would tear it all apart. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, it's pretty snug on there. So this one over here is where we really hit it hard. Ooh. Here we go. Nice. That's why you put parchment paper down. Okay. So here's our side. And actually you can see here, you can see where the, the CA, hopefully you can see that. You can see where the CA kind of flowed out here and it, fl and it and that's and there's the baking sodas in there. Like I can do that baking soda. See, can you see it? Maybe. And it's so nice because see what happened is it didn't bond to the to the parchment paper. So I can kind of trim this out of here, but um, no big deal. Okay. So it looks good. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back around this side and hit it with the CA again. I mean, it went through pretty good, so I imagine it's not, it's bound, it, it bonded pretty well, but I'm gonna hit it just this side really good. Now the other way to do this is use a wax paper, and um, that works also. And then in here, I'll go ahead and I'll cut this, trim it. The magic of CA glue. Okay. So all right, here's our here's the elevator. Oop. This right here. So this guy's gonna go just like that. And there we go. So I gotta come back now. Obviously gotta come back and I'm gonna have to shape these, but we're gonna wait. I'm gonna do that all at once. But here's the this guy's gonna go on here. All right, so there is the rudder and the elevator assembly. That's finished for now. I will come back and I'm, well, I'm gonna sand this. Kind of clean it up. And I'll do more, I'll do more of that when I'm doing the final, the final shaping. I'm gonna set these aside now. Um, the elevator and the um, rudder, put them with the fuselage, and the next time we're going to go and we're going to start the wing. So um, that's going to be fun, and that's that's like the the last major construction step is to build the wing. So um, we'll do that next time. All right, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you like this. Um, I'm kind of new to this whole thing, so I'm not very fancy with the way I'm doing it, but I'm enjoying it. So I'm hoping hoping. If you're watching this that you're enjoying it also if you want to leave some comments leave a comment um, we can chat stuff like that but I hope you're enjoying this I love RC planes I love building stuff um, it's been really fun all right thanks for watching